Hello everyone, this will be a brief training just to show you guys how it's going to look when you start applying for bank products, when you start applying for advances. Now, again, everyone does not have have um, their bank products yet. Your bank products have to get approved. So if you're someone who, who joined in the last two to three weeks, you're, you're probably not approved yet or you just got approved and you haven't received your bank products yet. Okay, so be patient with us. This is all going to, you know, this is, it takes time. It's not something we can push a button once you join and, and give you bank products. It's still a bank uh, process, okay? Now, I'm going to show you those who do have their bank products and who do have access, who have been approved. Uh, I want you guys to take pay attention to this as well. For those who don't, still pay attention so you can be ready uh, when, it's, when it's, you know, it's your go as well. Now, I've gone through a return already. Most of you guys should already know how to do a return by now. Uh, we sent out plenty of videos. We have a ton of them already. So I'm, I'm going to just take you to the next step of um, the next step of be right before you start to add client payment. Okay, so you always come to this summary page here. So this after you do health insurance, your state, uh, which is not available right now, guys, until the IRS opens back up, and then the summary page here. It's going the next section where you add your fees and all that is in the e-file section here, okay? Right here, you cannot add fees, you cannot do anything until you've done all the steps before. They mean, fill that basic information, income, health insurance section, state if you have one that, uh, and then the summary page is just a summary of all of that. So it's nothing you have to do here, you just hit continue. And then you have to do the EIC page, which I've already done in this on, on for this uh, video. It's right here just telling me I haven't added the state because we can't right now. So I'm going to hit continue. And so I've already done the EIC. The EIC is what you will come to usually after the summary page, but I've already done it so it's not showing up. You can always go back to it if you need to. Okay, so uh, most of you guys should know how to fill out the due diligence form by now. We have videos on that as well. I'm going to go to the ad payment section. So here's where you add the, uh, you add the payment. Here, you're gonna, this is what you're going to see. Everyone who uses refund advantage, remember, if you're a partner, we, you must use bank products. Again, that's part of the conditions of joining our partnership program. So you should always use something with, with refund advantage in front of it. Okay, These are bank products, everything that says refund advantage. If you just say e-file, that's not a bank product. If it says paper, that's not a bank product. So keep that in mind. Uh, Refund events ERC means refund event is a paper check. That means you'll be printing out a check in your office for them if you choose this, if they choose this uh, choice. Okay. ERD is direct deposit. Okay. So if they say, hey, I want to use my routing account number, you'll choose this. Card means the faster money card that some of you guys have. Some of you may not get it because refund advantage has changed the rules a little bit. So some offices that are brand smacking new may not get it the first go around. Okay, so but most of you probably should have cards uh, once you get approved and it gets shipped out. All right, so those are the choices. This right here is not applying for an advance. So for if your clients are not applying for an advance and say, hey, I don't want to advance, but you, we still got to use bank products, you'll choose check. Direct deposit or card is their choice, which one they want to do. Now, if they want the advance, they can only receive the advance via check or the faster money debit card. They're the only two ways they can receive the advance, but they still can choose direct deposit. So they, they refund the refund they get later on, uh, or if they get declined for the advance, they can still get their money on, in their direct deposit account. So if you choose direct deposit advance here, you see that's the check advance. This is a direct deposit advance. This is the, uh, the the faster money card, which is just putting in the envelope number. Okay, if you choose the direct deposit, just know their advance is going to come via paper check, but their refund is going to come to their direct deposit. So keep that in mind. Their actual refund will be direct deposit. I'm going to choose, um, I think I've already chose direct deposit on this. Now, and then you have to hit this right here, CNS pre-acknowledgement advance. If you do not do it as pre-acknowledgement advance, if you don't hit this check mark here, then it's going to go in as an advance, but not until the tax season starts for the end season advance. Also, remember, team, you are charged for these advances. It's $79 for if they get approved for the pre-act advance. It's $45 if they get approved for the end season advance, which is later on in, you know, later on this month or in February, whenever the IRS opens up. If you choose the faster money card, it's a $25 discount. Okay, it's a $25 discount from that $79 or 
or that $45. Keep that in mind. It's a $25 discount if you use the Faster Money card. So keep that in mind. The advanced options, they give you two here. The first one is free to the client. Whatever the first one is, it's going to be the lowest amount. It's free to the client. The second one costs the client, 30, they say 36 APR, 36% APR, aka about 2%. Okay, that's really what it's about. Uh, interest charged to them. You will still be charged. You will be charged a fee, though. Remember, 79 to 45. I want you guys to understand that that's going to come out of your prep fee. Okay, so you choose which one you want for that client. Here, I chose the lowest amount. Go down here. That should be your information. We have a, this is a dummy account. So it's a dummy, uh, Ethan and a dummy uh, company. And we hit, we hit here. I put the prep fees here. Guys, do not put anything in the electronic filing fee. Do not put it there. Because all it's going to do is add it to your preparation fee. So it's, it's frivolous to put anything there. Just keep it at zero. Do not put anything there. Just skip it. If you, Whatever your prep fee is, that's what we take our percentage out of per your contract. And that's it. If you want to add Audit Maintenance Pro or Audit Protection, you click it here. Okay? You click it here. It's going to be $89.99 charged to your client. Now, you see, they add. I'm going to make this 500 so it can be even for you guys. I'm going to make it 500 so it can be even. You see how it's $589.99? They add it to your prep fees, but remember... This you know, this is charged to the client, so you're not getting this $89.99. It's just the way they, they charge it. So out of this $89.99, you will get $25. So every time you add audit protection to your client, you will get $25. We do not pay that out until mid-July or uh, uh, no later than August 1st. So keep that in mind as well. Do not pay that $25 out until mid-July around or up until August 1st. So no later than August 1st. All right, so you only get this if the client's refund is approved. If it's not approved, you don't get this eighty nine. You know, you don't get the twenty five dollars because it's never charged to the client. All right, note: changing fees will modify the advance amount given to the taxpayer. Please verify the new advance amount after making changes. I'm going to let you guys know what that means. Up here, when you chose go to return type, when you chose this fee here. This fee is taking 25% of this refund amount right here. But when you add your fees, it's now taking 25% of this. So it, it goes lower because now your fees have been added, okay? So it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So right now, it's, it's all good because I've, I've already done this return. But this actually was about 2300 at first, okay? It was actually about 2300 at first. So remember, it's going to be 25% of whatever everything is from this number, from this number, after the fees and bank has been added. So it can, it can be a little confusing, but it's, it's not. It's not difficult to understand. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to go back again. I'm going to choose audit protection on this just to give you guys an example. You have to put an email address here. Have to. You're going to get an error at the end of this if you do not. The taxpayer PIN. It's the last five digits of the taxpayer's. Social security number. That's all it is. It should already be populated, but for any chance it isn't, just put the last five digits, guys. That's simple. The ERO pin is always this. Do not change it. Leave it alone. Hit, hit next. But if for some reason it's not there, 38116 is the ERO pin. Hit next there. Have to choose this button here. Just hit the check mark there. Answer the question about military. I already answered it. You have to put a number here. It's going to send them a message A message once a check has been printed or their money has been deposited. Put the number there. You choose the provider here. You check agree to terms. It's all just pretty simple stuff, guys. You, they have to. This is a new law the IRS are now making the banks do. So security questions. This is a bank thing. It's not a keystone thing. Ask them which security question they want and then put the answer here. I said, what is your the name of your first pet? I put Charlie. They may be asked if they ever called the bank, if they call Refund Advantage themselves. But remember, guys, as a, contra as a contractor, you are not allowed to call Refund Advantage. If you do, if you try to, it, they're going to tell us. Okay, so just don't don't even go that route. Okay, so the, uh, the address, you'll put that in. That will already be populated, honestly. The phone number, hopefully, this is all the stuff from the first page that you filled out. The next section here, you choose what, what you want to do. 
For those who are going to call and say, my client don't have a driver's license, no problem. Use the state ID. My client don't have a state ID. They're from whatever. Okay, use the military or the passport or the resident alien ID or the foreign passport. So those are the different options you can use. Put in the ID number here. Put in the issue date. Put in the expiration date. Choose the issue state. It's that simple. Hit next. Here you put in the routing and account number. Now I'm not going to put it in because I don't, I don't have one. So I'm going to go back up here and change this from, see, I'm just moving through there, guys. I'm going to change this from direct deposit advance. If I hit card advance, I'm going to hit card. I want you guys to see what the card looks like. If you hit card advance, they're going to ask for the envelope number. The envelope number is the card that you guys got. Um, and, 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 you know, when you get the card, it's an envelope. You don't open that envelope. You just put the number in for the client. Let's see here. Let's see if it's going to show it. So it's showing me the errors right here. If you hit save and you have not done everything, it's going to stop you. So I didn't put the card number in, so I'm going to hit it there. See, it says envelope number here. You put in the envelope number twice to confirm it. One thing that's very important, I need everyone to know. Once you mark this return as complete, that is telling us you're ready for it to be transmitted. We transmit returns we do it throughout the day. Okay, if you if you put in a you know complete queue at night and it's after hours, we probably won't, but sometimes we will. So once you mark it as complete, do not mark this return as complete unless you're ready for it to go. Because once it's transmitted, there's nothing else we can do. There's, so you make sure this is all correct before you mark it as complete. Make sure the client knows what they want, because once it's transmitted, there's nothing else we can do. You cannot go back and change anything so it's very important you know so you see you have to put the envelope number in if you use the debit card okay the, the envelope number is right on the card uh, on the envelope it's pretty easy to, to to understand i'm gonna go back since i don't have an envelope or direct deposit i'm just gonna hit check and when you do check you don't have these issues okay so everything's done designated here guys this may be pre-filled out it may not if it's empty and you don't want to put your information here it's optional. Just hit next. Don't let it just, don't, don't let it stop you. I'm, I'm sorry. Once you get to this, you can't hit next anymore. You have to hit save. This will be the end. Okay, it's gonna let you. This is the submission screen. Again, you guys are not able to submit the return. It says e file is currently unavailable. You can't e file. However, you can still mark the return complete and save your work. Okay, so you come down here. As a preparer, you sign your name one time in the system. You'll never have to sign your name ever again, okay? So Mary Jane is the, the demo name, preparer name I'm using. It's going to be on every document. Your client can come in here, hit sign, sign, sign their name with, with your mouse or your keep or your pad, whatever you have. Hit signature pad, hit save, and that's, that's it. That's going to, their name is going to be populated on every single document, okay? All right. This is, this is the ERO information. This is the client information. Okay, this is the client information. Taxpayer pins, 8879. You have to have an 8879 uh, to electronic file someone's tax return, but that's not a problem because our software don't allow you to do it without it. Here, return information. Guys, everything you do here is telling you what you've done. What type of return? Refund advantage, check advance. You have to pay attention to this because if you make a mistake and put the wrong thing, you cannot call us to tell us to change it. But once it's transmitted, it's over. This is your tax return. These are your clients. Please be careful. Pay attention to what you're doing, what you're putting in the system. Because we are just a software company. We would not be able to change any of this information. Apply for advance? Yes. So anyone says, oh, I applied for advance? No, you didn't. You know, if you say you applied for advance, it would be right here. If it says no, you look past that. We don't go in and alter returns, guys. We don't go in and change pricing, fees, anything. We don't do any of that. So please be careful at what you're doing when you're when you're doing. I just want to say that because we have clients that make mistakes, forget what they did, forget how much they charge, and they call us and say we did it. And we don't have time to go through 500 different offices to change fees. We just we wouldn't be efficient if we did that. This is where you will mark it as complete. Now, I already done it, but use this to just be a checkbox. You'll check it. If you want to mark it not complete, you hit no. But again, if you mark it as complete, you better consider that transmitted. You know, because once it's once we transmit it, we're gonna go in and do a quick look audit of your files or a couple of different things. We're gonna send it down the road. 
We don't have time to have re returns waiting too long. We make money when you make money, and if a return is not being transmitted, no one's making money. So we try to get those down the road within our hours of 9 to 6, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. We try to get it down. So give us up to an hour to transmit. Now, if we see something shady or weird, we will mark that as in review and do an additional audit. So that's the only time it'll take longer than uh, a couple of hours. So I have that marked as yes. Tax pre preparation charges it show 500 there. So it's just a summary of everything that's going on. I didn't make this. It's showing he's got 89 there. Remember, keep the electronic filing free at zero. Do not put anything there. This is an available refund. These are the fees. This right here is 39.95, guys. I don't know why this says 39 right now, but keep in mind it's 39.95. Uh, your service bureau will be right here. This is this is a dummy, so ignore the 99. It's whatever's on your contract. The six and the 18 is makes makes 24 dollars. So that's the 24 dollars trans that was on your contract. This is the advance amount. Now, now this would have been higher again, but now that we've added the fees and all of that. Is, is you know that that's this is the advance. So when you're, you're talking to your client, you tell them, hey, this is the advance amount that you will get if you are approved. Okay, and if you are approved, the advance plus all of these fees will be your check amount here. This is their check amount if they are approved for this advance. If they're not approved, then of course this right here, this is this plus this would be their you know their their refund amount when when their check their refund has to get funded. Okay, so. Again, guys, for every approved one, you guys are getting charged $79 or $45, not your client. So keep that in mind when you're doing your prep fees. Keep that in mind for the approved, okay? So if this the client, then you don't get you don't get charged for that, okay? And that would really be it, guys. Um, you hit save and continue, and that would be it. It'll take you to the, the beginning, and we'll go in and transmit it accordingly, okay? I also wanted you guys to know on this side here, uh, we're going to have a manual. If you guys need to look at this manual, you can look at this manual. I'm going to give you a, uh, just a quick glance at what the manual looks like. This manual here will walk you through, uh, not walk you through, but this is all the information about the software. It's, uh, it's I think it's 136 pages. If you do not want to skim through all 36, hit Control F. Control F up here. You guys, I don't think you can see it. Let me see if I can move it down. And you can type in what you're looking for. Let's say you're looking for rejections. You type it in rejections. Here. And so you can kind of go through here and look at what's going on uh, within the software to find different sections. Of. So I wanted to show you guys that. Let me get out of that real quick. And we're also going to have some other support stuff over here, like some other training videos that you can click and look at. That's the end of this video, guys. Um, let's have an awesome tax season. Again, if you do not see that available, that means your, your bank products have not been uh, approved yet. But we are working on everyone to get approved soon and everyone get their stuff shipped out to them. Thanks a ton.